Howdy folks and welcome to Hunting with Denny. First step in being a good hunter is to get yourself a gun. This here's my gun. It's a Ruger 1022, 22 caliber rifle. Right? It's a good gun. I like it. Next step in being a good hunter is getting yourself these fancy Gander Mountain snow camo clothes so that rabbits don't see you. Like so. The third step is getting yourself a mouthful of chaw. I do not like chaw, so I substitute sunflower seeds for chaw. A really chance to bring the rabbits in. You can smell that sunflower seed mixed with your spittle. It seems to be a good rabbit attraction today. That's all for today, ladies and gentlemen. See you next time on Little Virginia. Now, every good rabbit hunter knows the first part of being a good hunter is knowing what your rabbit track looks like. Now, if you take a look down here, we can see the two paw prints in the back. And then, Why don't you get a close up of that one, Jimmy? Right here. You see, right here we got the front paws and then the back paws. And it's actually interesting how a rabbit runs because it's kind of like. If you could bring the camera up here for a second, I'd like to show the folks at home. When a rabbit runs, the rabbit's hind legs come out in front of the front legs, and then the, and then the front legs actually fall down behind the back legs. So now to the untrained eye, that would seem kind of strange to see uh, a back leg and then a front leg right behind the back legs. But any good hunter knows, after they've been out in the field seeing rabbits run, that, that this is how the rabbit runs, and you can tell that this is a rabbit track because that's exactly what we've got here. Now, now by the looks of it, we can see that this rabbit's been running pretty fast. I would say, I would say this rabbit's coming along here around 15, 20 miles an hour, possibly chased up by a hunter or maybe by by a coyote or something like that. Um, one of the things we're really going to emphasize today in our show is knowing your rabbit track, knowing the speed of your rabbit and knowing the situation that your rabbit's in because if you don't know your rabbit, you're not going to get, you're not going to hunt them rabbits. Now there's one thing to remember, ladies and gentlemen, when you're out in the field, rabbit hunting like we are today. The old saying, don't eat yellow snow. Howdy folks. Everybody knows that the most important thing about a good, successful rabbit hunt is your rabbit hunt technique. There's lots of different techniques, but the one that we're using today is what I like to call the walk and pause. And the walk and pause has got two parts. You got your walk, usually around five to ten steps, and then followed by the pause. Pause usually around, depending on, depending on the country I'd say around here, we would do a pause of about 20 to 25 seconds. I'm just going to demonstrate it for you here now so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Now this is a strip of land I want to hunt. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, walk, steps, and then the pause. Now what's going to happen when we pause is those rabbits are going to hear us coming through the woods. They're going to see us coming through, they're going to get nervous. But they're not going to be nervous enough to move. When they're going to move is when we stop. Then they get nervous. They say, oh, you know, they see us. They can see us looking through. They, they imagine us looking at them. They think that we're on to them. Now, this is the time when we want to look around and find those rabbits, see them moving, and get our game. The topic we're all going to talk about today, ladies and folks, is uh, rabbit scat analysis. You're going to want to keep track of what your rabbit's been eating, what kind of environment they've been living in. You can also tell a lot about a rabbit's movement patterns. For example, I found some here. I can tell this rabbit been by here three hours ago. He's been living on mainly young leaf shoots, and he lives near water. Most likely, he's a male rabbit. So I'm going to move on down the trail and see if I can find some more. Signs of rabbit scat material. I don't see any right here, but I know it's out there. And that's really important when you're out in the field. The program today is brought to you by Marvlar Safety Back Vest Camo Hunting Gear.
Well, I happen to wear this particular vest, and I think it's just the best vest that I've ever had. Uh, it's got a, a 20 dot rating zipper up in the front here for uh, maximum zipability. You've also got uh, shot, uh, shell holsters, nice big pockets in the front. I'll tell you what, there's nothing better when you're out hunting. You know, you put your gloves in there. I like to fill up this pocket here with the sunflower seeds that I like to eat when I'm out hunting. Uh, we've got shell holders over here. We've also got a full line back. You put your game. You know, hopefully you'll be you'll be filling those vests up. And uh, with a product like Marvlar, I can almost guarantee that you will be just as I have today on today's program. For a minute about hunters' garments. A little known and well overlooked part of every hunter's wardrobe, something we might not all think about. We all wear hats. Who needs them? Jackets. Yeah, they're great. Keep you warm. Keep the rain off. That's not what's most important. What I'm talking about are my Hanes boxer briefs. Superior quality, support, and handling. Keeps everything in place when I'm in the field. Without my Hanes briefs, I could guarantee I'd never have seen a deer. I'd have never killed that mountain lion, and I wouldn't be getting any rabbit today. These and how they affect. Now, a lot of people like to go out hunting with the boys, and boys' time is good. But in a day's modern age, there's a place out in the woods for women, for your wife, your spouse, your life partner. I happen to bring my girlfriend Courtney out hunting avidly. She enjoys it. Uh, a lot of the times we have to tone down the trips a lot, but you know she really enjoys being out in the woods. Sometimes, you know, here's an here's an advantage that the guys can't have. We slip off into the back, and uh, I don't know. Maybe we should just cut that out. That's right now, I'm going to teach you about a little hunter exercise that taught me by my granddaddy. <laughs> it's called the tree rub. So you're going to get inside a nice solid forked group of trees like this and you're going to go side to side. And that's really working on the exterior quadrat muscles, which is a smaller muscle group, not well developed in a lot of regular folks, but for us hunters it's an important part of our hunting hunting mode in the field. So that's all we got to talk about that and uh, hope you enjoy your tree rub. Back folks, it's time for Mark's Ecology Minute. Mark's topic today is how to upturn a, an, uh, an unrooted tree and revitalize it. <clears throat> All right. Um, you see here we've got a, a fairly large tree that uprooted uh, possible causes, I'd say a, a tornado, storm, something like that. Now this is a big tree. A tree like this could take uh, approximately, I would say, <clears throat> 50 to 60 years to mature to this state. Now first thing we want to do when, when we're going to uproot a tree is we need to get it revived on the ground first. So we want to uh, bring in some type of a, a water system that we can uh, somehow layer across all of the roots on the bottom of the tree. Now, two or three months later we watch up on the top of the tree, we see the leaves coming through, then we know we can stand it up. A tree this size, we're going to need a big crane to stand it up. A rabbit here, a rabbit there. We've all seen rabbits, but one thing that many haven't heard, or many haven't experienced with a rabbit, is the sound of the rabbit. And today, we have Dan Berger here to tell us about the sound that a rabbit makes in the wild, and the sound that it makes um, before its death. Take it away, Dan. Thanks, Mark. Like Mark said, we don't, we don't know a lot about rabbit sound, but... When a rabbit is doing his normal activities of the day, he sounds something like this. You might not be able to hear that, but that's the whole point. Rabbits are silent, they have big padded feet. They don't make a lot of noise. I do, but if I was this big and had that big feet, I wouldn't. Now. Before a rabbit's death, they make a sound something like this. Beep, 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 beep. As you might have heard on some of your predator calls, it might be used in coyote hunting. Well, that's Dan's rabbit sound tip for the day, folks. Thanks for joining us.
Now here we see Mark. He's developed a technique that little little hunters know about. I don't use this technique myself, but Mark is more of an avid sportsman than me, so he's resorted to this. He's in the middle of a hunt here, and he's got some rabbits in his sight. He doesn't want to waste time to stand up and go through the motions. So his technique is when he's got to go number two, he just goes right in his pants. Mark's going to demonstrate that for us right now. The real thing to do is just keep your, keep in mind that you can always clean up later. And and the hunt is more important. He doesn't want to give away his position here, so Mark's going to stay hunkered down. Going to keep the rabbit in sight. And he's going to do what he's got to do. It's one of the keys to a successful hunt, the Mark Berger technique. Have we been here before? I don't remember. Which way is north? Oh, shit. It's getting dark. Looks like we're going to have to spend the night. What do we eat? What do we eat? There's got to be at least three things in that square that you're in that we can eat right now. And that's right, ladies and gentlemen. Not too many people know that, in fact, cattail roots are one of the best part of a real survivalist dinner. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get to the roots of this one because it's frozen in. Darn, I would have liked a good tasty mouthful of those about now. Second thing in this uh, assortment we can find that's edible, of course, find yourself in the wilderness without anything to drink. Well, you look at that. Hmm. When that melts, it turns into water. Hello? Third thing inside this square, that in fact we can find that's edible, is the sunflower seeds were in my pocket from the last time I went out hunting. I might have forgot that these were here, but a little tap of the pocket will find them. Keep walking. Keep walking. Here we are walking down the trail with Mark Berger. Not too many know this about Mark, but he's also a skilled poet and artist. So we're going to take a second here and ask Mark to turn around and recite one of his wilderness poets poems for us. This one's entitled, Oh Porcupine, You Are So Beautiful. Through the woods you walk, and never ever, never ever ever look back. Oh porcupine, oh porcupine, beautiful you are. Go down through the char of my <laughs> Oh porcupine, oh porcupine, beautiful you are. One of the things that many folks forget to remember when they're out hunting these lands is who originated in these lands. Uh, we've got to think about the Native Americans and how they used to view nature. Now, in their religious ceremonies, there were many um, different chants and different rituals that they would do. Uh, Dan's going to demonstrate one for us right now. It's called the Exalted Warrior Summon to the Underground. Uh, it's typically a, a 15 to 20 second chant followed by movements. Go ahead, Dan.